As the original iPhone was launched in 2007, the touch era of computing and the rise of mobile devices started. This is when the user interface and user experience started to fork into their mobile forms, with huge buttons, outlined icons and hamburger side menus. This era also spawned the trend of flat design that we're used to nowadays, thanks to Windows Phone, iOS 7 and Android Lollipop. Do you remember when those realistic looking icons from Windows Vista and OS X Leopard were considered so modern? Those were good times. Anyway, there is an issue with this mobile design trend that doesn't do anything bad to mobile devices, but rather to traditional desktops. As I said before, mobile UIs are characterized by big looking elements since they have to be pressed with fingers on the screen, but how does that translate to a computer with a keyboard and a mouse? In this video I'll briefly show you some examples of the implementation of a mobile-like UI and UX on some websites and even entire operating systems. Let's start! Number 1. Windows 8 In 2012, Windows 8 was one of the biggest overalls to the Windows interface. The start menu was replaced with a start screen and new apps with a Metro UI were introduced, such as camera, weather, Internet Explorer, PC settings, etc. The start screen has the main view with the live tiles that the user can pin, unpin, resize and move around. There is a little arrow icon in the bottom left to see all apps in a list that can be scrolled horizontally. When you swipe from the right side of the screen or if you put your mouse pointer in the top or bottom right corner, the chance bar will appear, with its not very useful options apart from search which is kinda helpful at times. If you didn't know, to shut down or reboot the computer you had to open the chance bar, click on settings and there is a little menu with the power options. In later versions of the OS, the power options menu was added to the start screen alongside a search button. The Metro apps open exclusively in full screen and in the original version of Windows 8 they didn't have a title bar, so to close them you had to grab the top of the screen and drag it to the bottom. They have absolutely massive elements, such as buttons, on-off toggles and text labels. Just like the start screen, when you have to scroll to see some more content, you can only scroll horizontally. In every app, there is a small toolbar at the bottom that you can bring up with a swipe from the bottom or with a right click. This toolbar contains several secondary actions such as pin to start, select all and refresh. Also, these buttons have the metro icons which kinda look like street signs, but honestly that doesn't surprise me considering the name of this metro style. So as you can see, using this interface with a mouse and a keyboard is not really good, but at least there was the normal desktop with all of the classic Win32 apps. Number 2. Windows 10 with this version, the huge problem from Windows 8 was mostly solved by making the Metro apps windowed like the classic ones was removed entirely, so they moved the search to a handy little search box next to the start button. And speaking of the start button, the start menu is back, yay! Only with more tiles because Microsoft really likes them. Several elements such as the action center, the search UI and the volume and Wi-Fi panels are just weird. They still have that kind of bigger appearance from Windows 8. When we look at all of the apps, including the Winter D2 ones, we start to see one of the main issues with Windows in general, the abnormal amount of UI inconsistency. There are apps that look like they were taken directly from Windows 7, others are the newer universal apps with their tablet-friendly assets, while there are still aero icons around the system, like for example the task manager icon. It's like that it can decide between staying with boomers or adapting to more modern devices that don't have much to do with Windows in the first place. Microsoft should really give up with their universal Windows platform, simply because nobody really cares, and several parts of this ecosystem were phased out, like Windows 10 Mobile, rest in peace. We'll see if they will actually address this issue in future with Windows 10 X. Number 3. macOS Big Sur This is a rather particular situation. In the past, macOS has always been very desktop-centric, with very little influence from iOS. But this year they're gonna ruin everything with the new macOS 11 by ignoring the golden rule of if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Look at this, it's fucking iPad OS, or some Chinese bootleg. Why did they do this? I can understand that they wanted to make it more consistent with their mobile counterparts, but this is too much. Apple is trying to make zoomers more happy with this more touch-friendly and colorful look. Even the default wallpaper looks like it was taken straight from iOS. But the people who use Macs for actual work and not for watching Netflix or browsing through Facebook are most probably going to be angry at this massive change. First of all, they made the corners of all Windows too rounded, it just looks childish. And look at the things like the spacing of the three window buttons, the new toolbar buttons and the tabs, could they be even bigger than that? 
The dock is also too rounded and the Ubisoft added all of the icons with that ugly squared background like iOS, but there's still a bit of skewmorphism, typical of the Mac. The menu bar is now much more translucent, creating a lower contrast between the background and the text, making the latter more difficult to read. They added a control center with sound, brightness and wireless controls that... Yes, it looks a lot like iOS. Incredible, right? The notifications look even more like iOS. I bet that in future they will rename the Finder to Files. Now let's laugh a bit with little nightmares like the battery and notification icons in system preferences. <laughs> Anyway, if you want a more in-depth analysis of Big Sur's new design, watch this video from Snazzy Labs. It's up in the cards. Number 4. Twitter. Same thing. It was absolutely fine before, but then they decided to ruin it. The first thing that comes up to your eyes is the links on the left side. They're massive. They're twice as tall as my mouse pointer. And the same thing goes for the tweet button, the account menu and these tabs at the center. When you open a tweet, it's not a floating panel like the old UI, so there's an awkward back button at the very top. And also everything is confined within a very thin column at the center of the screen. There's a constant waste of empty space and things that are too big. When you open something like a photo, the source tweet gets squished to the right side. It should be much larger. Number 5. DeviantArt The good old DeviantArt interface is now gone forever in favor of Eclipse. Just like Twitter, the things have been enlarged for no fucking reason. But I think that it's even worse here. Every menu, button, icon and pop-up is most of the time too big for a cursor. And this text here is more than twice as tall as my cursor. When you enable dark mode, it makes it very difficult to distinguish the foreground from the background of something like a button or a panel. The waste of space makes me lose my will to leave. Look at the menus. The bottom banner looks like a huge head with a tiny face. At least, when you go to the account settings, it switches to the legacy interface, most probably because they didn't really bother to change it. I think I'm done for today with this big rant against poor UI design. If you think I missed some website or app, or if you just want to express your opinion, comment down here. If you want to see my attempts at good desktop UI, since I'm obviously not an expert, check out my Dribble profile, where I showcase my US concepts. Thanks for watching.